So silence is okay. Stop talking. Now, this is actually not a tough question. This is just a, this is just a tr not, and it's not really a trap, but it's really something I'd like you to keep in mind. If asked, sometimes you'll be asked, are we in agreement on that point? That doesn't sound like a hard question. Most negotiations, you negotiate a point, and then you have to go on to another topic, and then you go on to another topic. Are we in agreement with that point? The correct answer to that is, it's, it seems that we are, but we'll have to see what the rest of the deal looks like. Because actually there's no agreement on any single point until all the points are negotiated. And you don't want somebody to call you an Indian giver the day after tomorrow if you've established pricing and then you realize at the last minute or because somebody forgot to mention it before that they have to be able to do it with a certain minimum term and you're not comfortable locking in that level of pricing for that long a period of time or whatever the issue is. So when they say, are we in agreement on that point, the answer is for now, or it looks like we are. We'll have to see what the rest of the deal looks like. And then you say, what's next on the agenda? So that's just another scripting thing that will help you out. Uh, just a, just a kind of a, a tip here. All right, do not apologize. A lot of people, I think more women than men, in my experience, if they're not comfortable or if they feel like they're asking for too much or whatever, for whatever reason, a lot of, there are a lot of people whose sort of general style seems to be if they're not comfortable, and it tends to be people who are less experienced, frankly, or people who, don't, people who are less experienced in negotiating or people who are less comfortable in negotiating, they, uh, they will sometimes apologize. I hate to ask this. They hate to ask it because they, deep down in their heart, don't necessarily feel that it's reasonable or they've never been asked to ask it before or because they expect rejection or for whatever reason. Do not ever, ever apologize, ever, in a negotiation, except for you can apologize if you're late to a meeting. Okay, <laughs> but that's about it. Never say, I hate to have to bring this up. If you ever, ever apologize or bring a lead in to, your, to the point that you're requesting, that indicates anything less than total confidence and that you deserve it today, right now, with a yes and no further discussion, you should be, you can count on not getting it. Or on, at least, I mean, you expect the other side to pounce on you and certainly don't expect to win the point. Or not, not even just win the point, but get it. Okay, so how you use Latin language matters. This is the one that I was talking about, Phyllis Mendel and the language, the Woman's Guide to Language Success. Use language in negotiations that is direct and factual. It is, a, it is a fairly common uh, characteristic of a lot of uh, the way that a lot of people, not just women, but a lot of women and also some men, during negotiations to say, I think such and such. We feel that it would be better for such and such to happen. Your thoughts and your feelings are actually completely irrelevant in a business negotiation, and they are perceived as weak. They will be perceived as weak. So statements, as I said, statements referring to your feeling to we feel this, we feel that, we think this, we believe that, uh, are generally perceived to be weak. So if you don't want to be, if you don't want to seem authoritarian or if you don't want to seem too blunt, uh, if you don't want to seem to have too hard an edge simply because of the social niceties of, of the way people, of people the, the way that people are expected or expect others to communicate with them, you could say, it seems that such and such, or based on our research, or based on our analysis, such and such should be the case. We think this, we feel this is weak, and your feelings and your thoughts, really, beliefs are irrelevant. So it's not just what you, and it's also not just what you say, but the way you say it. So I know that, I'm sure that none of you do this, but you, it probably drives you all crazy as, as much as it drives me crazy, when people, instead of speaking in declarative sentences, speak in questions. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can do it, but you know how people, okay, so this is a real question. You know how some people, they answer every statement, whether it's a question or a direct statement with a question? Now that has a question mark at the end of it, and that's okay. All right, well, it drives me crazy, you know? Well, that's actually all you know, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> you know, it drives me crazy. Uh, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. The people who say things, but they always end up, that wasn't a question, okay? <laughs> and everything they say sounds like a question, okay? Don't talk like that. I mean, seriously, that is just, but you know what? People do it all the time, all right? 
So anyway, just a, just a little tip here. So how do you handle hardball negotiators? Okay, hardball negotiate. A lot of bad behavior, a lot of bad behavior or difficult behavior. Um, I, the way I look at it is actually I'm a father of two sons and I'm a former little league umpire, so I have some. <laughs> so I, you know, I've sort of seen a lot of adult bad behavior in my experience. Um, however, um, I have two adult sons now. Um, if you keep your cool and you recognize that a lot of times the table pounding and the yelling and all of that. Oh, a lot of times it's just, a, it's grown ups acting like children and they try to make a point and they have no, probably, you know, some people do it for tactical reasons, some people do it because they feel like it's successful. The pro remember that the problem is the behavior, it's not the person, of course, this is kind of the, sort of the ultimate parenting, uh, the whole ultimate parenting drill. But also you'll see in a lot of multi uh, part uh, where you have teams, there, there are a lot of people who think that a good cop, bad cop, one person's going to come in and they're going to be really hard, they're going to bang the table and they're going to call you unreasonable and all those other things. All right. So a lot of times what happens and what a lot of people don't realize is that the good cop, bad cop drill is in many instances, it's, uh, it actually results in inconsistent messaging. So call them on it. Okay? Call them on it. And say, talk to the reasonable person and say, you know, I don't know if you guys are playing this good cop, bad cop thing uh, for a reason, or if you think that, you know, that somehow it's gonna, uh, uh, we're going to make more progress if you do this. But you know, he keeps yelling at us and telling us that there's no way we're going to get this deal done. And yet, everybody else on the team seems to be pretty optimistic about it. Could you, would you mind, would you mind uh, um, kind of getting your team together and presenting a consistent message? Okay, and there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with requesting consistency and calling the, bad, the good cop, bad cop. But then also ask yourself, if, if the people on the other side are, 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 are negotiating and are very, very un, are, and are unpleasant about it, ask yourself if, do you really want to do business with these people? I mean, if there's a consistent, if consistently they are not, pro, not looking to solve problems and are looking for every opportunity to, to, to push you around, or if it's so important for them to win every single point, and there are negotiators for whom it's a matter of personal pride that they win every point or they don't have to back off, you know, they, they hate backing off of anything and they don't find a middle ground is really not their style. You just have to ask yourself, do I really want to be in a relationship with these people? I mean, that's a very, very legitimate question for you to ask when you're, because you can learn a lot about people when you're, when you're negotiating with them. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can totally leverage it and get at their weakness. Like if you do have that person that just wants to feel like they won, you can get 99 things that you want as long as the one thing that's really yeah. visible to Actually, them that you know they what? get. You know, that's you really it. Yeah. Turn it yeah. That, yeah. Advantage. You know, I think, yeah, I think in some instances you can. The other thing that actually that hardball negotiator does it's a lot of times it makes the other people on the team really uncomfortable as well. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times, um, you know, you can ask to cut that person out, uh, or you can ask to kind of get the negotiations on a different track or whatever. But yes, um, I uh, a lot of times you can simply ask, you know, what's this problem? Uh, you know, do you want to do the deal or not? Um, or you can actually say, um, you know, we actually, uh, it's not, uh, you know, um, um, we're not accustomed. We're not accustomed to uh, to this. Uh, we're not accustomed to this this kind of rudeness, or um, that's not acceptable to us. And you, you know, and usually the people who are not who are not the ones who are. I mean, for you know, I'll tell you something. I am very very fortunate because most of the deals that I negotiate are long term deals, which are like marriages that involve people who are um, who who want the relationship to work and who want to put their best foot forward, and they keep those, uh, the people with bad behavior, they, 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 they put them somewhere else, or they don't bring them to the meetings, or whatever. So frankly, I'm actually very, very lucky in that I don't have to deal with those people. Um, but it is not, it's certainly okay to ask, you know, uh, what's this problem? But yes, if that person has one point that they really care about, you know, certainly, yes, exactly. Figure out what point you need to make them happy and then to make them go away. But don't give on it just to get rid of them, obviously. Mm -hmm. The key here, um, 
is I think, again, I'll, you'll hear, I'll, I'll have the word diplomacy on the next slide, and again, this first, uh, this point here on the script here, based on what you've said, it doesn't make any sense for us to continue the discussions, okay? That leaves the door open. It just says we're gonna take a break and we're gonna go back and we're gonna go think about this some more. Is there something, and then you can also, you can also say, I think we need to work on this a bit. And when you say we, that's kind of ambiguous because we're we, uh, our side is gonna work on it, you, and we're gonna work on it together, whatever. So, you know, impasse is not something that you want necessarily, but a lot of times it serves a good function. Um, remember that you wanna leave the door open so that you can get the negotiations back on track, and that means uh, just saying, well, sorry, you know, we can't do the deal, you know, whatever. Um, so you, and, and you also wanna, again, diplomacy, you wanna find ways for the other side to save face if in fact they've slammed the door and walked out or whatever. And there's nothing actually wrong or weak with helping the other side with saving face. So you can take a small step. If you've been, everybody's like, everybody's had ch a chance to cool off and you've been, uh, and you've been, you've, you haven't had any conversations for a week, but, but, there, but you know that both sides do wanna continue to work uh, want to make the deal go forward? You can actually, here's another little script here. Now that we've had some time to think about it, does it make sense for us to move forward with the discussions to continue? And then again, don't take personally their bad, bad behavior. And sometimes also for breaking impasse, a lot of times bringing in fresh faces or trying to figure out if there's somebody else who can, can try to find a solution. So here is actually kind of a concluding slide here about, about leadership. Um, a lot of people, um, I actually encourage every one of you, if you are ever had the opportunity to actually drive a negotiation, to take the opportunity to do it. Because you only get better with it uh, when, you, when, when you do it, by doing it. Um, and here are my, my like, management tips here <laughs> for managing a negotiation. You wanna make sure that you come to each session prepared and that means actually by setting the agendas and knowing what's on the agenda, what, what is on the agenda, coming to each session prepared and making sure that everybody on your team is prepared. And obviously setting agendas for each meeting and making sure that everybody knows what they are in advance, making sure that everybody is present, obviously. Um, and remaining truly present, which means no emails. Um, I, unfortunately, have never been in the position where I could do it, but there have been many, many times when I've been in a meeting when I have wanted to just stand up at the end of the table and said, everybody, please close your laptops. We're going to talk about the deal, okay? You're not going to set the schedule for next week on another deal, and please, you know, you're not going to be, people, people are doing three or four different things during meetings, and you don't make much progress that way. So no multitasking, and actually that is actually the last point there, being courteous, not multitasking and being truly present is probably one of the most important um, uh, leadership uh, activities you can do. Summarizing progress, of course, is really key. Understanding what you have achieved and what more needs to be done. Getting commitments for deliverables, obviously, this is just project management, right? You're solving problems, you've got a lot of problems. Identifying what the problems are and expecting the deliverables or stating who's, who's going to do what before the next meeting and making sure that everybody's clear on what their job is. Be direct, be respectful, be thoughtful, and be courteous. Of course, that's how you succeed in anything that you do in business. In summary, anticipate, prepare for the hard questions, rehearse them even, know what your objectives are, do whatever, do whatever it takes to increase your confidence before you go into a negotiating session. And again, rehearsing is something that, that I find is very, very helpful. Control the conversation by asking a lot of questions. Asking questions, as a way to avoid answering questions is perfectly okay. It's something I highly recommend. And don't forget that perceived expectations drive value. That's my first point, start high, set expectations. Okay, so do it thoughtfully, look for opportunities to negotiate more often, have a lot of fun. All right, thanks everybody, enjoy.